After a thankfully uneventful seven-month journey, NASA's Mars 2020 mission safely reached the Red Planet and inserted itself into orbit on Thursday, ahead of deploying the Perseverance rover, an Ingenuity helicopter prototype, down to the planet's surface in search of evidence of ancient microbial life. However, this expedition has been in the works for far longer than Perseverance has been traveling through interplanetary space. First announced in 2012, this mission marks the culmination of nearly a decade's worth of work by hundreds of machinists and designers, rocket scientists, and engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But not just anyone can get hired there, working for the world's premier spacecraft production facility and building equipment that will grace the surfaces of neighboring planets. For Mohammed Abid, a deputy chief mechanical engineer on the Mars 2020 mission, the path to working at the JPL began in his native Tunisia. After graduating high school there, Abid moved to the UK to complete his master's before coming to the US for his PhD. But good grades weren't the only thing that helped him get his foot in the door at the JPL. Abid credits having multiple internships under his belt as a key factor in his getting hired. Internships gave me what I needed to get where I am, he told Engadget. Abid also advocates for potential JPL applicants to develop and nurture their hobbies, whether that's puttering around the garage while homebrewing robots, learning about ethical hacking, or even just painting and other traditional arts. That added hands-on experience could well be the extra nudge needed to convince recruiters to hire you versus an otherwise equally qualified candidate. These additional qualifications can also help newly hired JPL employees rise through the agency's ranks. While these experiences can help set you apart from the rest of the applicant pool, you will still need to pass your interview, which Abid notes is very attribute dependent. Some interviewers will ask difficult questions akin to Google's infamous how many golf balls fit on a school bus while others will focus more on the applicant's critical thinking skills or interpersonal capabilities. As Deputy Chief Mechanical Engineer, Abid's responsibilities at the JPL are quite varied as well, depending on the phase that the project is currently in. For the design phase, his focus is to ask, do you have the right designs? Is this the right design for us to use? What are the trades that we need to have in place and what decisions have to be made to go with one design versus another? Once the project enters the build phase, Abid must worry about, are we building the right thing? What are the materials that we're using? What are the analyses that we're using? Basically making sure that the team is asking the right questions and ensuring that they, as he put it, come up with the right system that can meet the requirements and constraints that we have for this super duper complicated machinery. The testing and verification phase is especially exciting for Abid as he has afforded the opportunity to troubleshoot problems ranging from ensuring that the adhesives used to glue components together bond tightly enough to confirming that critical systems won't rattle themselves to pieces under the strains of launch. For Christina Hernandez, a payload systems engineer at the JPL, her position is all about asking why. We're kind of like a jack of all trades, she explained to Engadget. Our job is to be in it. A payload systems engineer is basically the person whose job it is to understand the science instruments and the tools aboard the Perseverance rover. Hernandez's route to the JPL was a bit more direct than the beats. She graduated from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a master's in spacecraft design and space environments modeling initially interested in creating systems to collect space junk from low Earth orbit. She found that problem fascinating, so she went ahead and learned basic programming skills that she'd need, like Fortran. But more importantly, she developed her critical thinking skills. Hernandez notes, a systems engineer has to be able to question all of the disciplines that it takes to come up with whatever particular design is being implemented. Now, not every position within the JPL requires such a breadth and depth of knowledge. While some employees will move between roles and teams multiple times during their careers, Others will find their niche and stick with it, such as fastener specialists who, as the title implies, focus all of their efforts solely on rover fasteners and only that during their time at the JPL. For Hernandez, the most intriguing part of the Mars 2020 production cycle has been the verification and validation phase. That's due in part to the fact that the JPL test site that they use is home to Optimism, a nearly identical twin to the Perseverance rover, as well as one for the Ingenuity helicopter. These allow PSEs to see how the hardware and software systems interact in a Mars-like environment in real time. As she explains, that's where you know all of the systems engineers get excited because you kind of start to get a feel for whether the end-to-end -end system is going in the direction that you envisioned based off your scientific and mission objectives. The Mars 2020 mission is expected to arrive at its destination on Thursday, February 18th at around 3.55 p.m. Eastern. Tune into NASA's YouTube channel to watch the orbital insertion live.